Okay, well, this is the fifth in our series of former player interviews, and today we bring another title-winning captain in the shape of Kevin Mooney. Welcome, Kevin. Yeah, good to good to speak with you, boys. Good to see you. Looking, Looking well. Forward. Looking well. Well, I don't know about that, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah, everything's everything's good. Good man. Okay. Well, we've just been having a little chat off camera about the actual number of appearances Kevin made. And uh, Dan's got a different number to me and Kevin's got a different number to both of us. So well, what we're going to say is just shy of 200. One way or another, he didn't quite get to the 200 appearance mark. So uh, but I think everybody knows Kevin and the season we all remember is 92-3, which we'll talk about in a minute. But just tell us how he came to join Southport, first of all, Kev. Say that again, sorry. Didn't... Can you just tell us how he came to join Southport, first of all? Um, I, I remember meeting uh, with the chairman and um, um, I was at Bangor at the time and uh, I'd had a bad, uh, bad injury and, yeah. um, and then I left um, and then I went to see Charlie and, uh, you know, he, he spoke about the club and, uh, it, to be honest with you, it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the period of when I was there, we were so successful Um the camaraderie in the team was just just amazing, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, it's one, it's 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 probably I've, I've been very lucky in in the time that I've played. I was at Stafford Rangers. We won the conference. Very similar to, to, to being at Southport. I got the Player of the Year from the supporters yeah. and 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 the team, and did the same at Southport. Um, and Banger, my time at Banger was good, but. I think the Southport team were, were special. I mean, the others were, but I think we that just just edged it, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know? I, think, I think everybody we've spoken to about that season talks about the camaraderie and the characters within that team. It, it does seem to have been rather a special setup at that time, doesn't it, Kevin? It, it does, yeah. You know, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, we had a great manager in Brian. But at times... We just knew what we had to do, mm. you know, and that, that, and, and that is not no disrespect to, to, to Brian in any way, shape or form. But we just knew we just knew each other and we knew what we had to do. And, mm. um, and, and it was a fantastic time to, to, to play at Southport. And, and, you know, I always look back with great memories for that season, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that season. Well, you joined us in 1990-91 and had over 40 appearances that season. 91-2, we were building up to 92-3. What was your biggest memory about 92-3, of the championship season, Kev? I think it was the final game when we won, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. You know, that was so special that day. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't remember things that I did yesterday, to be honest with you, but I always <laughs> remember... The lads put me on, one of the lads put me on the shoulders and we were running around the pitch. And it, it was just a fantastic experience. It really, really was. I don't know if you can remember this, but I remember reading, because all this was obviously pre-internet days, wasn't it? And I remember yeah. reading that, um, that you said in the weeks leading up towards the end of the season, you were sitting there with the league table trying to work out all the permutations of what each club had to do to win the title. And, and that's how you sort of knew what we had to do. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's sounding a bit of an anorak. Yeah, oh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mustn't have had anything better to do. But uh, no, but it was it was fantastic, fantastic time for the club, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was. Uh, having been in the doldrums since we got kicked out of the football league, to suddenly realise, hang on, Southport is going to get a promotion and the title at the same time. It was a very special season to a lot of people. So uh, you know, it's one we'll always remember. But can I take you back to a game in that season? And you're going to have to be honest now. Was it a fluke or did you mean it? Which one? The Barrow? The, 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 your goal at Barrow. Meant it. Did you? Because it was the wind, wasn't it? Yeah. You, know, the, you know, I think I think it was the, the windiest game I think I've ever been played. And I think, I remember that, I think it was our goalkeeper. Hit a goal kick and it went out for a corner. Uh, you know, so so the wind. So so I was I was cognizant that the wind and could do it, but well, clearly the goalkeeper didn't. You know, he 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 came too far off his line. Yeah. And and, and when you're looking from 50 yards away, it just was. And, and some people say, no, you didn't mean it, but but, <laughs> but it did. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think yeah, when, yeah. when people talk about goals from Southport players, it's often talked about as one of the best you've ever seen. And it was such a meaningful goal as well, wasn't it? Because Barrow were one of our main contenders that season. Yeah, yeah. Barrow were always tough, weren't they? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, that was that key games that we had to win. Yeah. To be fair. And, um, and you know, some great players. Didn't we? You know, I know you, you've spoken to Peter with us. What a player Peter was. You know, I could, you know, Steve Hall as well. You know, strikers uh, were brilliant. But, but Peter, for me, Peter was a special player. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I used to love training with Peter, but when we used to train on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I just followed Peter around when we train. You know, when we do the, you know, you do your warm-ups and then you actually play a game against each other. I just followed them all, all the way around. And at the end of the training session, nearly makes me swear on this one he, he <laughs> turned around to me and said you know what are you doing i said i'm well you know i'm, I'm defending it i'm defending against you and he said yeah but i haven't touched the ball and neither of you and i said but no peter but that's my job that's that's what i do and he used to go bonkers to be honest with you yeah. Yeah. but uh but he's he was a fantastic player yeah he was wasn't he he, he, was, he was gifted yeah you know, was there a particular yeah. moment in that season where you thought, this is ours, we, we can have this? Um, I think most of the games, you know, I, I, we, I, sometimes you know when you're in something special. And, and it was special. It really, really was. I know I'm probably repeating myself, but sometimes you just know you're in a good place. You know, and having experienced it when I was at Stafford and then Bangor, you know, but the pinnacle was 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 what we did, and and you just know sometimes when people have got your back, you know it, it it's fantastic. There's so many teams you can play in, and you get people. You know, you get your dressing room split up when they go in the bar, and three go there, four go there, five go there, and and you don't have that camaraderie. But we did, and we had some we had some nutters in the team, Mosey. <laughs> Everybody you know, says Paul Moore is a nuts, don't yeah. he? He really is. He's nuts, isn't he? Yeah. He's he's absolutely nuts, you know. But what a personality! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I speak with him quite uh, quite a lot. See him um, frequently, um, and he, he's he, you know we we went to um, to one of the World Cup tournaments with England. Uh, I think it was about four years ago, five years ago, when he was there, and he was he was just nuts when we went to Thailand. You know, he was difficult to control, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> and, and that season, did you play every minute of every game or did you not quite? Not quite. Ever well, so shy at the end. I think it was about three or four minutes, wasn't it? Yeah. Last, was it last, last game you came off with an injury, wasn't it? About three or four minutes before the end. Other than that, it was every single minute of every single game. Yeah, I can't believe, I, given my mindset, I, I can't believe that I allowed myself to do that. <laughs> I really can't. Why I just didn't stay on for four I minutes. I think you just wanted a stand innovation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it was just, yeah, definitely a wrong decision to do. <laughs> and that season involved two cup finals as well, which you must have been quite proud to, to raise the cups in, uh, I think, was one at Chorley and one at Goodison? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it, it was just... It, for, for, for me, from a personal perspective, it was it was fantastic. Um, you know, it was the year. Well, I, I got married the year before, it, and then our son was born in the in in the same year. We won everything, so right. it was a very special time, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great time to be. How did you find the step up to the next season, Kev? Because you stayed with us into ninety three four, didn't you? Was it hard? Um, yeah, it was it, it, it was different. Yeah, you know, it was it was a difficult time. Um, you know, I think when you have such a successful season and you go up to the conference, yeah. you know, you think you're going to have all the momentum and everything. But um, but yeah, part of it was difficult. Um, but um, you know, it was a not 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 a great season for us. But you know, given what we'd um, we'd done past season, but. Um, you know, it, it's it's just a different league and, and and slightly difficult. Yeah, there's very few changes though in the team, wasn't there? We, you say we didn't do well, but we, we didn't do too badly. 
Um, yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, you know, that, that season we, we did okay. And Brian was still with us, wasn't he? Tell us a bit about Brian Kettle and his management style. Um, he was um, he was a quiet man, um, yeah. was, was Brian. But, um, you know, he, he knew an awful lot about football. You know, he, sometimes I, th- I don't think he got the credit that um, he deserved, to, to, to be honest with you. But, um, no, he, um, you know, he brought us all together and, um, and stopped people from going into pockets when you'd have little clicks and that. Yeah. So we were, we were just a... It was just great, you know. Every time we go train, you know, if we if we didn't have a game and we were training on a Tuesday or the Thursday, everyone loved the training, apart from Peter Withers that he was the only one because <laughs> uh, I followed him round all the time. But um, Brian, Brian was a was was a great manager. And Steve Joel, you know, he was he, he was um, he was an important factor as well. Yeah, was Steve the Steve was the assistant, wasn't he at that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. So you know they were both both great, but um, but I think you know as a team we knew what we had to do, you know if and that, and, that, and as I said before there's no disrespect to them we, but we just knew what to do and what we had to do when we went out in every game and if we needed to do anything, you know we'd reorganise it ourselves yeah. if we needed to do it and and I say it's it's no disrespect to them it's just I just think we were a special entity for that season couldn't yeah. have been any better. No, no, it was it was it was a special season. You you left us at the end of ninety three four. Where, where did you, did you have a reason for leaving? Um, no, I just think it was um, for, from an age perspective, it was just time to move on. To, to yeah. be honest with you, and it was at that stage where I just set up my own business, and um, so I, I you know I had to to to, to grow the business. So I yeah. So sort of a few months after leaving, I um, went to Chorley for a little bit, um, and I just concentrated on, on on building my business. Then, to be honest with you, yeah. and I thought, you know, I thought that was the end of football. And then, <laughs> I mean, you've um, been playing for for a long time by that point already, haven't you? I mean, we, what, what when did you first start professional football? Um, professional football. Um, when I was um, 18, when, when I was at, um, I was at Tranmere when I was a, a young lad and um, they offered me an apprenticeship, but I lived in Liverpool and I can't remember the exact figures, but they were going to pay me, I think it was about 14, 16 pounds a week and it cost me 18 pounds to get there. So coming from a working class family in Liverpool, you know, that just wasn't going to happen. So I stayed. I stayed at Tranmere for, for the two years, playing for the A and B teams, and then um, Bangor City wanted to sign me, so I went to Bangor. I was there about seven months, and um, I had about four. We had a great team. I think nearly every player at Bangor that year. I think about ten of the team got sold, and um, I had a choice of about four clubs, and I decided to um, to go to Barry. Um that was 1978. Um, didn't work out for me because the man, the, the manager who was there, uh, Dave Connor, he was he was fantastic and he was um, he'd had a great season before. They played Liverpool in the FA Cup. And I remember playing um, in the Central League against Burnley, and uh, he signed Neville Southall at the same time as he signed me. I remember right. coming to see, he came to see me on the pitch, and he, I was saying about you know I'll, I'll start practicing on my right foot, and then he said to me. Okay, don't don't practice on your right foot. You've got you've got a wonderful left foot. Just just you keep going with that. And he was brilliant, but we couldn't. Neville and I couldn't play because you were signed after the not the transfer window then, but you just the, the date. There was a date that you had to yeah, be signed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately for me, um, Dave Connor got he, Dave Connor left in the summer because he couldn't agree a contract, and mm-hmm. um, so he left. And then the guy, the manager who came in, just wanted all the players. You know, I was only a, a young 18 year old, so I think I only made one appearance for them. So was it was it after Berry that you made the move abroad? Yes. Um, now there's an interesting I, Southport link here, and I don't know even if, whether you you've picked up on this, Rob. But you went to Sweden, yeah, to play for. Have a guess, Rob. Alan Ball. Alan Ball, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, Alan Ball Senior. Um, when, when, when I was at Berry, he, he, he got in touch with me. Um, you know, we didn't have mobiles then, <laughs> so 
you know, he rang me a few times and asked me, did I want to go and play in Sweden? And I, I was only 18. Um, and I said, well, you, you know, I, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. And um, and I didn't turn up at the airport because, I, if I'm honest, I was just I was just scared, you know, going yeah. to a country that, you know, I've never been to, don't speak the language. So then he rang me um, and said, look, go over. You know, you, you'll really enjoy it. And I went and I did. Um, stayed there for a year. Um, came back, to be honest, because I was a bit homesick with, with, with my family and um, and then and then I went to Telford for, for a little while and then got um, sold to Tranmere and then played there for a while and then um, and then left and went to Stafford and then you know um, and we come full non- circle as we said yeah yeah full circle uh, to be honest it, you know what though the when when I was at Tranmere. Um, I, I, this is where I could get some bad language, but I won't. <laughs> Please not. Um, yeah, you know, I got I got told when I was the, the manager was Brian Hamilton, and all right, yeah, he, he was to say he was difficult would be an understatement, you know. Um, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but you know, I got told I was. Um, I, I'm not going to use the word, but I got told I was not, not very good. good enough. Yeah, uh, not good enough. And, you know, sometimes when I'm playing left-back and he's playing right-back and he's shouting at the cross and the opposition can hear you. So yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say boo to a goose at, at that stage because I was very shy. Uh, one of the people, you know, you had to put your arm around, but no one ever did it. Yeah. And, and when I left there, you know, I, I, was, I was gutted because I, I love football. You know, I love playing football every day and, and, you know, being a professional, you can do that. And then when I left, went to Stafford, I was there about eight, ten games, um, and the manager made me into captain. And you know, one of the for, for me, I think one of the, the, the strongest points in my game was trying to organise the defence people, and 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 so clearly I had that in in my locker, but no one ever brought it out apart from the manager. Who, who took over at, at Stafford and he who, was, who was the team. manager at Stafford? Kev? Um, oh, the predominantly when we won everything, it was a guy called Ron Reed. Um, oh, and he one of the England, yeah. he, he'd been an England coach, yeah. And and he was brilliant, you know, he was brilliant and he just brought it out on me. And I sometimes maybe I was too vocal, um, when I was playing, you know, well, my wife didn't like coming to watch games because, <laughs> because I'd just be screaming and shouting so much. But do you know, do you know, when you, when you look at the, the way football's played now, it's just, it's just so overcomplicated. Yeah. You know, if, 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 if I was playing centre back, which, you know, I did predominantly at Southport, I was centre back and Derek was sort of, Right hand side, I'd be left hand side if, and you've got your left back. You know, if a wing is going down, you've got the left to the left back. I'd just cover them and say, you know, I'd drop 10 yards off, and if he dropped it past them, I'd just come across and tackle it. And same with the centre backs, you just drop off. You know, and you watch Liverpool, who, who Jurgen Klopp, I'd, you know, I'd love to play for somebody like him because he makes you, it looks as though he makes you feel so special. But when, when you play some of the games like they played at Real Madrid, and they play half a yard inside the their half. You know, centre back is just going to do what they did. They just do that and then ping a ball over the top. Yeah. And I think even at my age now, if I played in that team, I'd just get them to drop off. I, but I don't understand why Klopp doesn't say to them when when he was watching the game and he's on the sidelines. Yeah. Say, guys, drop twenty yards back, and then they're not going to be able to do it. Did you ever fancy going into management yourself? Um, I had a little spell before the, I, I got to Southport um, at Manga for, for a little while, for about yeah. six months. Um, and yeah, I'd love to have gone into, into into management. And because of the success that I'd had at Stafford and Manga and Southport, I think I'd have got a job quite easily, to be honest uh-huh. with you. But um, I was building a business. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, that that scuppered it, and and I always look back. I mean, I can't complain because the business, you know, was really successful, and I, I sold it and bought the house and everything. So I can't complain about that. But so, yeah, it's always one of the things. Looking back in my career, 
I'd love to have, to have managed. Love so to have you managed left us. Stuff. You, so you left us. It was around the time that you were building the business up, but you didn't stop playing full stop, did you? You're still playing today. Um, I stopped for a little bit, uh, to be honest with you, maybe about a year and a bit. And then I remember getting a phone call from Peter Withers, and he said to me, you play for this team, I can't remember the name, up in Waddington, and he played at Ford's pitch. So, so, so me and Mark Brennan went up to watch and it might be a bit difficult to explain this. So we, we, we went to watch and we went upstairs on the first floor, which we had the bar was, and we were having a couple of beers. And some guy went to take a corner on the, the left-hand side. And normally, if it's a right footy, you put it sort of that side of the, of the flag. But this guy put the ball on that side of the flag and then come round it, come round the post to take the corner. And it went out for the goal kick. <laughs> so me and Mark just said to him, yeah, we'll come next week. <laughs> because if that's the standard, I'm sure we can do better. And yeah. so we started playing uh, veterans football. And um, and then when I got to the age of um, I got to the age of 50 and I was I was playing regular and um, we played a game up in Liverpool against a team called Harrogate. And um, after the game. Um, they beat us after the game. We had a chat with them and that. And then I think it was two, two, two or three days later, they got a phone call uh, from this chap called Paul Bell, who was the Harrogate manager, but he was also the England manager. This was about, I don't know, February, March, something like that. And um, he rang me and asked me, did I want to go and play for, for England um, in the Seniors World Cup in June? I think he rang March or something like that. And I thought it was one of, you know, one of my mates messing around, Mark <laughs> Brennan or somebody like that. Um, so he said, that he said, you're not going to believe me, are you? And I said, no, no. You know, he was going to phone you up and say, do you want to go and play in the World Cup? It doesn't happen, does right, it? You do, yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so he sent me an email. And so I was 50 then, just 50. And um, I played 10 years, um, going every year for the Asian World Cup. And, uh, you know, we won it four times. And it's just, you know, what an amazing experience. You played for England for, for 10 years, did you, Kevin, in, in the seniors? Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. yeah, yeah. England seniors. And, um, and we won the World Cup four times when we've been there. And uh, so, and uh, yeah, some fantastic, fantastic memories, to be honest with you, with that. Was there anybody else we'd know playing at, in that team? Um, Lee, yeah, as I say, memory's not great. Lee no. Trundle, Barry Hales. Oh, um, right. Uh, Peter Beagrie, oh, gosh. You know, some some fan, some fan, fabulous players, you know, um, really really good. But the thing is, it's the the, the, the the format that they use. You've got four in the in the, the squad's about twenty six, like the, the main England squad. Um, but you've got the categories were thirty eight to forty five. You have four players, forty five to fifty. You have four players, and right. then you have three players over fifty. So, um, but you know, it didn't matter. You know what you did twenty years ago. It's what you can do now. Yeah. You know, so you know, you may have the the, the greatest pedigree, but if you, if you can't run, you can't run. But you know, we, none of the players were like that. Peter Beardley, amazing. Lee Trundle, what what a player. You know, he's just magnificent. Magnificent player, yeah. so so yeah, we had some great times there. To be honest with you, we we also have a, we normally go once a year for an over fifties tournament there. So uh, you know, I, I'm, w- w- will I get in there this season? Don't know. Sixty one now, so uh, you know, but but I still play over thirty five football, and you know, I play I play ninety minutes, and I have no. You know, no aches or pains after the game or the following day. So I'm, uh, I'm so lucky. I wonder what you put it down to. Um, don't know. It's the honest <laughs> answer. There. I take about really eighteen vitamins a day. Whether yeah. that's got whether that's got anything to do with it, I don't know. You know, all signs of with all kinds of tablets and that. So whether it helps me joints and that, I don't know. Did you have any injuries during your during your main career? One. Honestly, you know, near enough. I was very lucky at Southport. I mean, I'm going to say I played every game right to the end, apart from that. Uh, when I, you know, when I played the staff, I'd never missed a game. Bang, and never missed games. 
I had one injury at Bangor where they dislocated my ankle and um, I was told that I was going to be finished because it was it was a really bad bad injury. Um, Certainly showing and, that, aren't you? Well, yeah, but I was, I was lucky because if it, I, I went to see um, the Everton physio. Somebody said to me, go and see this guy and he, he's brilliant. And, and I can't remember his name. Um, went to see him and... Um, he said to me, well, it is a bad injury. It's dislocated. They had like a plate in the, in the, on the outside of my ankle. He said, but, you know, you can get through it. And, he, you know, he, he, was, he, he got his inner soles out of his shoes, which were about size 11. He was a massive guy. And then he cut them all down and then put them inside my shoes to make them easier for me. And after about a month, I, I was okay. So, you know, I've got an awful lot... I've never seen him. I've got an awful lot of gratitude to him because if it listened to the first consultant that had gone to, I, I wouldn't have played football again. And and I, you know, I'm so lucky that I don't get any injuries. So I'm playing. I played for England uh, over 55s last Sunday. I'm going to Watford this week. Watford on Sunday um, for England walking football over 60s, and then I'm going to Oxford two weeks after that to play for the England over 60s and my wife Yvonne is um, is going to kill me because <laughs> it's it, you know the, the Watford the Watford thing on Sunday is a five and a half hour one way yeah and, and, and we don't play till I think it's five o'clock six o'clock so I'll be home probably about two o'clock in the morning oh dear you'll be in bad books there Kev well I, I've got to say um you know, she's a very understanding lady. Um, and, uh, we're, you know, we're, without her, I wouldn't have been able to do all these things I'm doing. And my son, you know, my son's, he's, he's great. He's, he's living in a place called Koh Samui, in, um, just off Thailand. Oh, right. Um, he's, he's a football coach um, and uh, enjoying life. I, I was able, we, 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 we went to Koh Samui when we played in one of the England tournaments. And... Um, I went to see a guy there who, who, who owned the academy and, you know, he said to me about going there, being a coach and, you know, I couldn't do that. I'd love to have done it. They, they, t- they teach children about four to five hours a day, something like different, you know, age groups and that. And um, so um, he'd done a bit of football coaching. So he went instead of me and uh, he's been there now best part of two years. Yeah. But it's, been, it's been a little bit difficult with this COVID thing, you know, because there's been times where he's been um, sort of on his own for so yeah. long because they've been in quarantine and stuff like that. So, um, so hopefully, um, I might not get selected by England this year. And I'm not sure that the over uh, the over 50 team, I probably will. Don't know about the World Cup one. We'll see. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm definitely in the the walking football over 60s one because that's that's what we're going to do in Watford on Sunday. That's absolutely brilliant. How long do you want to keep going, though? Um, till I can. Yeah. If I can, you know, if I can do it, I'll do it. But, yeah. but I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I am literally playing probably four to five times a week. So, tra- you know, training five aside or whatever. So, you know, t- to be doing that at my age, you know, some I feel so sorry for some of the people, you know, like Mark Brennan, who's one of my best friends. You know, he, he struggles really uh, badly. You know, so so I'm you know I'm I'm very lucky to be fair, you know, because it's you know it's 61 playing four or five times a week, and to still be playing over 35s football, you know, that it's really good. I think that's quite it's quite phenomenal to be perfectly honest. Yeah, Away from terrible. football, just for a second, Ken, uh, do you get time to do any work? Have you got a job? I have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do I you have, do yeah. it? Um, well, it, it it's. You know, most of the football is sorted after the hours, so um, so 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 it's not really an issue. But um, but yeah, so the uh, yeah, so so the, it doesn't interfere that much because it's normally out, uh, you know, out of work hours. To to, to be fair, but yeah. um, but but it's uh, just it's it's so I'm so lucky just to be able to do it. I really am. Yeah, all right. It's a fantastic story, and I, I just I. I I've struggled with a game of walking football today for an hour. So how you're playing four or five times a week and you play full pitch size and everything, don't you? So I think that's absolutely brilliant. 
Yeah, we've 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 we played for England last Sunday, and it, we, you know we uh, to be fair we got beat, but um, I didn't do so bad. And there was um, I played left back, but I was you know bombing on quite a bit, and um, yeah, so I, I enjoyed the game, played well. Have you got any advice for any of the, the youngsters up and coming in the game today? Is that how they can look after themselves so they can still be playing when they're sixty one? <laughs> um, just look after yourself and I'm not saying that, that I have looked after myself um, but um, it, it, I think sometimes it's it, it's luck isn't it you know because there's so many players like Mark and, and other, you know other guys who play the set balls who can't do things because of the knees and ankles and it, it's just luck isn't it and you know I, I remember when I was 50 and when I was 50 I was I was still I don't mean to sound that, but I was still lightning quick. And I remember we we played for this team in Liverpool, and there was a guy who played for them who was 60, 61. And he was, and he was, I, I looked at him and I was thinking, isn't that amazing? You know, he's 61 and he's playing football. He wasn't that great, but he was still playing football. And, and now I'm doing that. And I'm thinking, you know, people, you know, you've got to think what people, what, what, what's funny when we play in the over 35s and I'm playing left back, you'll, you'll see the right winger who could be 35 or 36 and you can see him just licking his lips thinking I'm going to kill that man, you know, because he's, <laughs> he's, he's an old man. Um, so, but, but I, I don't get, what's the word? I don't get ripped or anything by anyone or I wouldn't play. Yeah. You know, I can tell when, when you're on the pitch, you're a leader. We've we've all seen that, and I'm sure you still are today. Who so you influence people when you're playing every day? Who was your biggest influence when you were playing? Um, not sure really. I mean, to be honest with you, that it, it was only when I met the the, the chap at Stafford. You know, I think when when I was young, I was so quiet. I was I was just so quiet and and and. I think um goes back to when I was a young boy. When I when I was a young boy, I had a really bad turn in one in a, in one of my eyes, and so I was oh, you know, I you know people always used to call me all sorts of things. I won't go to the names that they would call me. Um, but when I was seventeen, I, I went to hospital and actually got an operation on it. So I think that was part of the reason why I needed somebody in at that stage to put their arms around me and and encourage me to play. Um, after I got to Stafford when um, and the manager helped me, you know, I obviously, like I said before, had it in my locker to, to, to be confident. And, you know, I'm still, I'm still like I was at Southport now when I'm playing for England, walking football or for England 11 aside, I'm still shouting and, and telling people what to do in a, in a constructive way. Yeah. You know, I, I very rarely have moaned you know, I would never moan at anybody because it gets, you know, gets you nowhere if you're going to moan at somebody in a team. You know, if you, if you think you've got to say something to them, then you just say it, you know, one to one. So, you know, but the thing is, just just encourage people, you know, because it's, you know, you, you, you're all trying to win. You all want to do and have a good game. So, um, so yeah, for me, you know, I, I can't, I don't think I've ever really shouted at anybody in my life because I, I want to be positive and try and, you know, make them be as positive as they can be as well. Big difference, isn't it? You know, when, you know, there's nothing worse if you're in a team and people are, you know, moaning at each other and, you know, you're in the dressing room and, you know, people are talking about each other. It's, it's not a nice place to be. And I've not been in too many of them, to be fair. Well, you brought us all some fantastic memories down the years, Kevin. And, and I know, you know, if ever you do get the chance to come back to, to Southport to watch a game, I'm, I'm sure Dan would grab you to get you in the Legends Lounge to, to give a little talk to some of the, the people that go in there. So please keep in touch with us, won't you? And and, and do come back because we'd love well, to listen, see you back. Well, listen, 100% Dan, when, when there's a game um, coming up, just, just give me a shout and I will Absolutely, do. Absolutely, um, of course will. And uh, and to be honest with you, I'd, um, at some stage, I mean, I have to be very careful because of all the football I'm playing, because <laughs> I am in the doghouse, <laughs> to be fair. But um, but no, at some stage, g g give me a shout and I'll uh, I'll come across and um, 
and join in with the the walk in football. Oh, that'd and, be fantastic! Yeah, absolutely. And meet me in Baines um, on on Friday in um, in Brutal. Yeah, because uh, um, um, people who are playing five five aside and they've got I think it's some issues with Parkinson's. Yeah, we we've just had a game it, against yeah. them. The Southport lads just played against them on Hay Avenue the other week. It was absolutely fantastic. And that was with uh, John Roach and Ian and everybody, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm meeting John on Friday, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one of my England shirts with me, yeah. and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna play, play in the five side that they're doing, Brilliant. and um, I'm gonna pick a man of the match, yeah, and give him, uh, give them an England shirt after fantastic. the game. Oh, fantastic! Well, yeah, if you do get a chance to come to one of our our sessions at Southport, we, we would really welcome you. But as I say, try and get along to a game and we'll get you in that lounge and uh, you can face yeah, just, all the just, questions. Just, just let us know, but I, I, I promise you that I'd love to come and uh, and uh, and play one of the games with you, with the walk and stuff. It's, um, Brilliant. You know, it's great. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Lovely to see you, okay? And you, mate. Thank you. Take care. Cheers, Bye. boys. Take care. Bye-bye now.